Welcome to the Hustle Pod here on a Friday, an impromptu edition of the Hustle Pod. In fact, I am, of course, Brian Power, the man on the screen, my good friend and yours, Mr. Adam Trigger. We are here today to talk about our home conferences, the MAC and the MAC. We'll be hitting five games in five minutes for you. We'll also be talking about the two most heavily bet games, UConn, Butler, Purdue, Illinois, Trigg. How the heck are you doing? Uh, I'm really looking forward to this show today for a variety of reasons. Oh, me too, BP. Great to see you. It's Friday, getting ready for the weekend. Listen, I mean, this isn't all that different than what we did all regular football season. It's just these games are on a Friday now. We talked Mac football all year on a Tuesday, and now we're going to sprinkle in my Mac, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, because both these teams play on a Friday. And, you know, there might not be that many games on a Friday, but there's quite a few Mac games in both you know, respective leagues. And so hopefully we can uh, lead you to a couple winners uh, to, to take, take some money into Saturday when there's a trillion games. I think 145 to be exact this week. Yeah. So before Trig and I do what the critics say we can't do and break down five games in five minutes, <laughs> more on that later on, let's talk about the two most popular games on the board, the games where there is the most public betting, UConn and Butler, Trig. Butler's obviously taking money. This line has come down all day long maybe at the opening number you could have interested me in Butler, but man, that I know th th with the injury that UConn has, it, people are, 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 are wanting to fade them maybe, but are people kind of falling in love with Butler too much here? I think so, especially if you're coming in at, at the current price. Um, you know, like I said to you off camera, uh, if I could go back in time uh, to when our, our good buddy Keith Bayou Betts Landry texted us yesterday and said, man, Butler plus six and a half looks too good to be true. I got to lock that in. Then I probably would say, yeah, I, I'd like to be on Butler at six and a half. At four and a half, I just don't have enough confidence going against UConn. Like I made, I made a lot of money betting on UConn last year. And I think I've made, I've saved a lot of money not fading UConn this year um, in spots where it maybe looked like they profiled as a fade. So if you forced me into a pick here, BP, it'd probably be Butler. But at the current number, I have no interest. Um, just a, a tough game. Hinkle Fieldhouse, live atmosphere. But who wants to bet against UConn? They're deep. And uh, Hurley has an answer for everything, it feels like. So it's a tough one. Yeah, absolutely. Another big game on the docket, Illinois-Purdue. Now, people were convinced with Terrence Shannon out that Illinois was a fade against Northwestern. Oops. Uh, they absolutely clobbered Northwestern earlier in the week. But Purdue is a much much tougher test. Obviously, uh, everybody's got the Boilermakers among the very nation's elite. The spread here is double digits. So if you want to fade Illinois, you got to, you know, lay, what is it now, 10 and a half. This is a tough game for me, but I don't know. A lot of people thought Illinois was an auto fade without Shannon. They proved the people wrong against Northwestern. Going on the road to face Purdue, do we see kind of reality set in for a Shannonless Illinois team or what, Trig? Anything here? And I, I don't know. I, I really, this is one that I just, I kind of saw the big number. I think my my gut w w say, tells me Purdue is probably gonna gonna win this game and has the, the chance to pull away. But man, BP, I, I kind of this was one of the first ones I crossed off. I know it's top ten team versus top ten team. Should be a great, could be a great watch. But are you that surprised if Purdue comes out and kind of you know? blows them out by 20 I'm not so I decided to stay away yeah I mean Shannon it can't be you know overstated what a huge loss he is for Illinois is as good as they looked against Northwestern yeah I, we can't stress it you know it's a big jump up the class and they're on the road okay those are the two most heavily talked about games kind of tough handicaps you and I are on the same page both those now let's get into what we kind of the genesis of this show when you texted me this morning you were just kind of like hey man you know my home conference, the MAC, and your home conference, the MAC, the Mid-American Conference, uh, they make up the bulk of the Friday docket. Let's talk about those games. And I said, okay. And I said, what if we, you know, tried to break down five games in five minutes? And just to peel the curtain back here a little bit, wager talk, okay? In our inter-office communication, we propose that to do this show today. Every producer came out of the woodwork and said, there is no way the two of you can <laughs> confine a college basketball breakdown to one minute. So the critics are against us, Trigg. This is what we're going to do. Trigg's got three MAAC games he's going to break down. I've got both Mid-American Conference games I'm going to break down. 
We're doing one minute on five games. Our producer, Robert, is going to throw up a buzzer. So when we say we're you know, doing these in one minute, he's holding us to it. We're going to prove the critic wrong. And there you go. I'm already talking too long, they think. So, Trig, you're going to kick us off with Manhattan, Niagara. I don't understand the line movement here. You are on the clock to talk about this game. Yeah, so Manhattan plus two and a half, so 4% play for me. BP, I'm agreeing with you in the respect that I didn't get the line movement either. The only way that line move would make any sense is if Daniel Ruzon was still going to be out, but that's not going to be the case. Uh, he's been out recently with an appendix injury. Uh, he went through warm-ups against Wagner, and they decided to scratch him before that game. But earlier in the week, they said he'll definitely be back for the MAC game on Friday night against Niagara. We should see Zinni Lee back as well for, uh, for Manhattan here. He's missed time recently. So Manhattan, like these are two of the worst teams in the MAC. but you give me like two difference makers on one side back and two and a half points, and it's a dratty, a home game. I can't pass up taking the points here. Niagara is one of the worst teams I've seen play in person. This team has no post presence whatsoever. They are the worst rebounding team, one of the worst rebounding teams in the country. They're going to need to shoot the lights out. I don't trust them to do it on the road. So Manhattan plus two and a half is a 4% play for me. What do you say, critics? We're one for one here. This show off to a rip-roaring start. Okay, now I'm going to take Bowling Green and Akron as we move to the Midwest. All right, put me on the clock. I am ready to roll here. And at first glance, I got to say, Trig, this looked to be a lot of points to lay against a Bowling Green team that's won eight straight. But two of those Falcons victories against non-D1 foes, three more of them were by a total Yes, a total of eight points. Bowling Green had to rally from an eight-point halftime deficit last time out to force overtime to beat Eastern Michigan 92-90. to They were 10-point favorites at home in that one. And you look at Bowling Green, they've only had to play two true road games thus far as part of one of the weakest non-conference schedules in the entire country per Ken Palm. They did beat a bad Southern Indiana team, but only by two. And then they were blown out in Oakland by 21 as two-and-a-half-point dogs. The highway in the past has been unkind the Falcons. 8-22 and 22 ATS their last 30 road games, so I'm not in a rush to back them here against what I feel is the best team in the MAC, Akron. Akron's got four losses, but three were by three points or less. The Zips, they do have some a few close wins of their own, so I don't want to lay it. I'm going to take the under, because Bowling Green, bad offensive efficiency, and uh, Akron, they play slow. <laughs> That was about a minute I mean, technically, I left you I, – I did like 57, 58 seconds, so I, I really left you like three extra seconds, and, you know, you were, you were going to get there. I said it's still all, all right. Up next, back to the MAAC, the Metro Atlantic. Canisius and Mount St. Mary's, the game they all want to know about, Trig. You're on the clock. One minute. Yeah, so I like Canisius plus three here for, for one reason, and that's I just don't think that Canisius is that much worse – um, without Taj Tavesky, who's been out virtually the whole season, played in their first two games, played sort of, you know, wasn't a huge factor, and he's been out her all year. Because of the emergence of CM Uchendal, who went from a guy that played 12 minutes a game last year and was, you know, scored like three, four points per game, to a guy that wasn't even in the, the guard rotation this year, who's going to come off the bench as a rotation piece, to being one of the best players in the MAC conference. 15.3 points per game. He's basically just slid right in for Stavesky. And if you go back to the beginning of the season, I was extremely high on this Canisius team because of Stavesky and how good I thought he was. Thought Canisius was at an outside chance to win the MAC. And I still think they're a little undervalued because of it. So I make this closer to a pick. You're giving me plus three. It's a tough trip to Mount St. Mary's all the way down in Emmitsburg, Maryland. But I think Canisius is the value here. And plus three feels good. Two one point games for these teams last year. Mount St. Mary's. Mount St. Mary's won them both. Canisius gets their revenge tonight. All right. I thought it had nine on. seconds. It was at zero. <laughs> yeah, I thought it said nine. Right. It was already at, already at zero. All right. I've got to save us a few seconds here. And we are turning to Miami, Ohio at Toledo. This is a client play, Trig. So we're both giving away client plays on the show for free. It pays to watch the hustle here on a Friday. All right. Let's get that timer going. Toledo, they opened MAC play with a nice win at Ohio. My alma mater, 86 77, is one and a half point underdogs. They definitely needed that after back to back losses to Vermont and West Virginia. How did the Rockets shoot against Ohio? Well, how about 56.9% from the field? 
look, we know how this team profiles. It's been the same for years. 65th in offensive efficiency per Ken Palm, not to mention 91st in adjusted tempo, but they're going to give up points. They allow 79.6 points per game and are a horrific 298th in adjusted defensive efficiency. So I do not want to lay double digits. This number looks a, a smidge too high, and that's why I jumped on the points. I got Miami plus 12 and a half. Yes, they lose outright as a five-point home favorite in their conference opener to Western Michigan. However, I like the points here. I think Miami's going to come out fired up after losing its conference opener. And here's the key. Toledo sandwiched in between two big road games. They won at Ohio. They're going to Kent State next. This number's too big. Give me Miami, Ohio on the points. Bam! All right. We have a fifth game. You drew the short straw. I guess there are just more MAAC games than there are MAC games <laughs> on Friday. And what do you know? The old alma mater's in action, Trig. Sienna hosting Fairfield. I have no idea why your alma mater is taking money here because this number's come way down. And please uh, enlighten us on Fairfield, the Stags against the Sienna Saints. All right. Well, I can tell you why Sienna's taking money. Um, it's because Sean Durgordon has been as good as advertised since he got the waiver. They've played three games. He scored 20-plus points in each game. And Michael Elliott is now healthy. He had 30 last time out against UMass. He is the was the preseason MAC player of the year or, you know, right up there with uh, the, the guys to win that award. And he got hurt in Sienna's first game. He looks to be back to full strength. The problem here and why I, I'm not dying to bet Sienna in this spot is Fairfield starting to roll. you got to remember that this was a Fairfield team that went into the season without four starters. They were that banged up, and they started one and six. They've now rattled off six wins, and they've looked really good in doing so. So even though I do think the original number was probably good value with Sienna, and I think Sienna has a chance here. This game is down in Albany tonight. Always get a good crowd at the MVP arena on Friday nights. I'm just not dying to bet against Fairfield. So I'll throw a lean on Sienna plus four out, uh, but it's only going to be a lean for me. Go Saints, though. Hope they get the win. Oh, man, we're getting the handle of this. I'll tell you what, they are in shock behind the scenes at wagertalk.com. And we are happy to break down five games in five minutes for you. We also touched on the two big ones earlier, UConn, Butler, Purdue, Illinois. We'll be doing this every Friday throughout the college basketball season. Trig, uh, also, uh, while we still have some time, perhaps, uh, if you would care to, we uh, have a next Wager Talk road trip in the works, apparently, uh, you and I going to Pitt, who will be hosting Duke. This is, I believe, as I think back over the first 43 years of my life, the first time I'm ever going to see Duke play in person. I know you've already seen that you saw him play in person not that long ago. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun, right? Oh, I can't wait. I, You know what? I've lived in the Northeast my entire life. I, I don't think I've ever been in the city of Pittsburgh outside of being in the airport for like a few minutes or like just driving through. So it's weird. It's like the one Northeast city that's alluded to me. I've never been to Peterson Event Center. Uh, can't wait. So, yeah, me and BP will be at the game on Tuesday night. It's a 9 p.m. game. Big game, Duke and Pitt. Can't wait for that. And um, if you're in town, let us know. Come say hi. Uh, if you're at the game, we'll, we'll, we'll meet up with you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have extra tickets to this one. It's, it's not. <laughs> this is a, a, be a hot tougher ticket, ticket yeah. to get. But uh, you never know. You never know. I ended up with two extras at Colorado State. We got a wager talk uh, viewer out to the game. It was awesome to meet. We, that's probably the best part about this whole thing is, is getting to meet you guys along the way. Um, so, yeah, let us know. We'll be around before the game, I'm sure, 9 p.m. tip um, in Pittsburgh. So uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter and we'll make it happen. Hopefully the in-person understreak will still be active uh, when we go to that game. I say hopefully we'll still be active because just a little tidbit for you guys. Uh, I am making the trek downtown here in Cleveland to take in Cavs Wizards tonight. little spoiler alert. Old BP, Dustin, is in-person understreak off, I believe. I'm going to have to look it up if it was nine or ten in a row. It's been so long. Um, it, it's all college basketball. Uh, most of those games I've been with you. And then Cleveland Guardians games. But whenever I am in attendance, the under hits. And, boy, are we going to put that to I, test I love, because the Cavs are hosting the I know, Wizards I can't tonight. I can't wait till it hits. And then, like, Monday night, that uh, that pit total starts to steam up. And you're like, Trig, I, I got to cancel. I don't know if I can go to this game here. I can't, you know, oh, looks like points. Oh, I'll like. do it. I'll do it. Trust me. We always got to <laughs> keep a good gimmick going. But, yeah, if you're happy to be in the Cleveland area, I will be. Look for me. Uh, you can always come down and say hi. Cavs, Wizards 
uh, tonight. I'll be there. And then Trig and I, Tuesday, Duke and Pitt. Big ACC matchup there. All right, Trig, we did it. No sense going longer. You know, the point of the show is to confine the analysis, and we did that. Critics be damned. So unless if you've got anything else, let's just remind the people, smash that like button. Give the show a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our exclusive sports betting content. We've got that great New Year's special where if you purchase a 30-day package, we're going to throw seven extra days on, which is a $99 value, free of charge. at $37 or 37 days, pardon me, for $299. That'll include the last week of the NFL regular season, college football championship game on Monday, NFL playoffs. I've got a 5% play locked and loaded for NFL this week. You can get that right now on my page, wt.buzz backslash pp, along with four other NFL Week 18 winners. I'm locked and loaded for Monday's championship game as well. Why don't you tell the people what you've got going, Trig, over at your page? Two college basketball plays tonight. Tripped over that word, even though I say it 100 times a week. Um, both in the MAC. I gave you one of them. It's Manhattan plus two and a half, four percent 4% play. I have another 4% play I really like in a game that we did not discuss. That's over on my page. And a great college basketball special. Rest of the season, you don't even need a coupon code. It's on the deals tab. It's number one in college basketball last year at Wager Talk, 87.35 units. And you can get all my picks from now and right through one shining moment on Monday night, the first Monday in April. So uh, head on over to wagertalk.com and check that out. Uh, but yeah, two plays I really like tonight up on my page. It's Adam Trigger. I'm Brian Power. You know where to go. And until next time, guys, let's cash some tickets. Have a great weekend.